The following presentation is for educational purposes only. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Bars Closing. My name is Jim Cagnina. Appreciate everybody being here today at Bars Closing. I do have a trade percolating up on the screen. We're going to rotate to that really quickly here because I want to explain exactly what I did. I used an ATM strategy on this trade. This is a counter trend trade. And I'm basically got short uh, after we start, after we topped out, after Tom Snyder tweezer top candles came in here. This is the micro E-mini S&P 10 minute chart. Um, so I got short and I added a strategy and I wanted to show you guys how I did that. And right now it's a, it's a multi-target strategy, right? So I have one pro, one target in my three lot. This is a three lot trade at 44.25. The second lot, uh, my target is three at 38.25. And the third target down here is 31 even. My stop is above the highs, above the tweezer tops right here at approximately uh, 52.60. I understand the trend is up. I understand it's a powerful trend right now. We're doing a counter trend trade going into the close. And I, auto I automated this, right? These aren't manual. When you see these labels way out like this that are kind of bright red and bright lime green, uh, this, was a, this was a strategy. And I, I employed the strategy from the trading ladder. You can see customized, number one, down at the bottom, lightning bolt is right there, uh, which means the strategy is on. I'm gonna go ahead and just see if I could show it. I might not be able to show it. I, I, I can't show it while it's going, but when it's, when it's done, I'll show you. So whether we get stopped out or whether we hit our profit targets or not. The idea here, though, is once we get a certain distance, I think I set it for 16 ticks. If it goes our way, 16 ticks before we get stopped out, then if I set this up right, the stop should jump. The stop should jump to break even plus a tick automatically, hands off the wheel. So that was the idea, multi-target strategy, counter trend trade with a one jump. Stops can jump once, once I hit a profit target of a certain distance. I believe I set it to 16. I did it earlier today, so I can't, I can't remember, but I think that was it. So we'll see. Right now, the trade's going against us a little bit. Um, you know, Tom is taking an opposite. You know, I talked to Tom earlier today. He's taking the opposite, opposite approach. He's going for R1, uh, which, again, is incredible. Let's take a look at some of these daily charts here just to kind of take a peek at what is going on in these marketplaces. We'll go to the uh, classic E-mini S&P ES for this daily chart right now. Been a long week. We did a lot of stuff. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. We still have tomorrow up with a lot of stuff going on. It's Thursday. Time flies. Um, I think it's Thursday. I'm going with Thursday. So, you know, CPI, PPI, CPI, PPI. Almost an equal and opposite. Not quite. Not quite. We have a lower high and a lower low on this contemporary candle. Day's not done yet. We're right at that eight exponential moving average on a daily chart. We're right there. So again, range bound. I think this is a pretty good range, right? We the bottom of this range starts. I don't know what is what day is this? This is the third of April, fifty one ninety six and a half. The top of my range, which is the top of the hamburger bun, that rectangle up there, is fifty two seventy one and a half. We're right between them, but. The thing that's interesting to me, the thing that's interesting to me, and, and let's just keep in mind, this is from 5271 down to 5196. So that's about 80 handles, 75 points, 75 handles. And we're spanning it. We just spanned it once. We spanned it twice, a couple sideways, attempt to span it again, spanned it a third time. And now we're trying to get back up there again. So this is, our, these are, this is in my mind, big moves on a jittery market. 
There's a lot of FOMO going on here. And the FOMO is, hey, I want risk off. Hey, I want risk on. Hey, I want risk off. Now it's risk on again. So it's really incredible to see these big candles in this range after this really, really long uh, rally that we had in the equity markets. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit, you know, <laughs> a lot of FOMO going on, a lot of uncertainty on, on, on the price direction here. So we'll see where we end up today. Um, obviously I'm betting for a little bit of a retracement, but I could be wrong, which happens every once in a while. Appreciate everybody being here with me today for sure. Later on in the day, Paul H. Good to see you. Paul H is the first to chime into the chat. Paul, I appreciate you. Thank you for being, uh, the first, uh, one in the chat. I have all my bells and whistles set up here below me. <sighs> Let's keep moving. Micro NASDAQ. I have the same kind of trade idea, but a little bit different. Look at this guy. I mean, this is a, this is a, a spike, huge rally. We overtook yesterday's highs, right? So we look a little bit different here uh, in the NASI than we do um, in the ES. This is, you know, target wick here. We're off to the races, 18,706. We're not too far from that. So we broke out of that range. And you can see I had my little rectangle here starting at about 383. We broke through it. My guess is we're going to close above it. Uh, we're above both the moving averages that are tangled in love right now. That's that eight simple moving average and the 20, uh, I'm sorry, eight exponential moving average and the 20 simple. Um, we're, you know, we're well past it. This is the strongest market. Uh, Mike Burke talked about it at the midday wrap. This is the strongest market. And yes, I also have, yes, I also have another strategy set up for that market. If I could find it, let me see if I could find it. I can here. I'll show you. I think I could show you this one on the trading ladder, maybe. Let's see if it'll let me, it won't let me show it again. Yeah, because it's in play here. Again, though, I'm waiting for a higher high before we get short again with the same similar uh, strategy. Again, we'll keep an eye on that uh, when we get to that. And here's that chart. That chart is separate. I kept it separate so I could run the, the, uh, the ATM separately. That's all. That's why we have separate charts right now. Um, so there's my target wick, right? I want to see another breakout on the, on the upside before I, get, I try to get that retracement. So I'm right at that high, right a little bit, a couple of ticks above the highs right here, waiting for that ATM to trigger. And you can, ATMs trigger on market orders, on stop loss orders. If you want to enter on a stop loss, on limit orders, um, you know, join the bid, join the offer, no matter what. Once you enter, then it, the software knows, all right, I'm going to trigger. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get, get involved here. So we're closer to getting a fill here. Again, pretty strong market here in micro NASDAQ. I'll pull that off to the side so we can keep an eye on it later. 306 and climbing though. Wow. This is pretty impressive. This is an impressive move. Let's go. Let's see what other, what other stock index futures may or may not impress us. Russell, not so much. Now Russell is trying. You got to give it credit today. You have to give it credit today. I tried a little bit, still didn't get there way far away. There's something special about the, about the non-financial NASDAQ 100. They're non-financials, right? They're, yeah, you call them tech stock, but there's other companies in there that aren't really a tech stock, but there's predominantly really heavily weighted to to uh, um, uh, companies that need heavy duty chips or manufacture heavy duty chips or manu manufacture uh, photolithographic machines to make the, make the, make the chips, um, IA companies. And so the NASDAQ is really kind of special. Right now, the Russell 2000, a small cap still struggling with this idea that we're gonna have uh, no rate cut this year or maybe one rate cut this year. If we're really lucky, two rate cuts this year. That's what it's looking like so far. But remember, between now and the June meeting, we have two CPIs, two PPIs, two cores, uh, two um, uh, PCEs. So a lot more data dependent. And the FOMC folks are data dependent uh, according to their language, as opposed to the ECB people who just like to, they just say what they, they want to do. They don't care. The, <laughs> the European Central Bank folks are like, yeah, we got to cut in September. Or yeah, we're not going to cut in September. They just say it the way it is. Anyway, um, that's the difference between the two. I don't know. Maybe it's a cultural thing. I don't know. But anyway, Russell still has a decent day, but a long way to recover from yesterday's debacle. Now, I'll call it a debacle. The Dow has been rough also. We're right up against the trend line that me and Tom drew, I don't know, a couple of days ago. I left it in. We broke through. We broke through it. One day, we closed below it. Now, we're right back at it. And sometimes those trend lines are kind of meaningful. So that's why I kept it in there like that. We'll see if we stay... Uh, underneath it. If we do stay underneath it, it could be a sign that, hey, this trend is going to be on the top of the, th of the market instead of the bottom of the market. Oh, boy, oh boy. That's the story of the stock index futures, folks. Um, 
I don't know what to say. A little, a little schizophrenic. But in any event, we'll keep going. We'll keep tracking it. Let's go to gold. Gold is a really good market too. Today, gold, this is the stairway to heaven formation right here. This is just buyers, buyers, buyers. Yesterday was a hiccup. I thought it was going to be a hiccup. We're not ready for a 37.5% retracement yet in gold. This is the strongest trending market that we could see right now. We're tracking 2381.20. Um, I don't know, 100 or so handles ago, or maybe 200 handles ago, uh, we weren't quite at the all-time highs measured in real terms. In other words, inflation-adjusted terms. We might be now. I don't know. But we're about to take out this target wick right here which is 23.84.3. And that is uh, two great uh, traders have identified that level. As we take this out, I want to get long. One of them was Jesse Livermore, who's no longer with us. The other one is Jimmy Iorio. So we'll see, we'll see if we take this out. It does look like it. Today, there's no wick on the top of this candle. This is all buyers. This is a really strong, powerful upward trend here in gold. I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. You know, again, this idea that it can't go any higher, forget about it. It could go higher. It can go a lot higher. So who knows? 3,000? By the end of the year, I forgot who said that. I think it was the Citibank guy. I don't know. That seems a little, that seems a lot of aggressive. It seems like a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of aggressiveness right there. That would be, I don't know what, um, 60%. Nah, that'll be a big move up. That's another $600, $620. So I'd be surprised at that. So that's the story of gold, just, just driving into the end, which suggests, again, continuation buying tomorrow. When I see this pattern, unless something happens, unless there's a big economic release, which tomorrow there's not, unless there's some global something that happens that we're unaware of, a black swan or unplanned news, if you don't want to go so far as to call it a black swan, um, I, my guess is we're going to have continuation uh, buying on this particular marketplace is old. Gold futures on the move, June 2024 contract. Let's take a look at silver. We might as well. Same pattern here, although it hasn't been in rally mode as long, but it's following. It's following the leader, highly correlated silver market, maybe a little more industrial uh, practicality associated with this metal. But again, this is a bullish engulfing candle, really. It, it is. It's a bullish engulfing candle and um, no wick at the top again. A little bit of a wick on the bottom, but no wick on the top of this candle. We're driving higher, driving higher, looking for this target wick to be taken out. That's going to be my target tonight and tomorrow, 2864 in the silver market. We're way, way overbought on the RSI, but RSI doesn't care. We were overbought. We're above 70 back here at August 2nd. This market didn't get the memo that it's supposed to sell off once we get overbought. It didn't get that memo. It's still, it's still searching through its email. It's, this is a pretty strong, powerful, uh, pretty strong, powerful rally in silver. Let's go to Dr. Copper. Dr. Copper has also been causing some excitement, although we're having a little bit of a pullback right here in Dr. Copper. This is really a nice textbook retracement right now. I'm going to draw my fib line in here really quickly. We're going to go low to high. Low to high. And there you have it. Nice rally up above all the moving averages. There's no moving average crosses to think of. RSI is starting to kind of taper off a little bit. It's still overbought, but still tapering off a little bit. And we have this really nice retracement going down here. This eight exponential moving average, it'll be interesting to see if this holds or not, right? This is the third lower low, only the second lower high. So anything could happen right here. 37.5 is the next uh, wick through, in my opinion, which is uh, 419. 58. But again, other, otherwise, it's looking pretty strong. We could go back in time and it, it, it looks even more pronounced if we do that. All the way back down to these lows at the beginning of February. So rally, pause, rally, retracement, rally, retracement, question mark, question mark, question mark. 25% is not doing it for me. I want to see 37.5 or at least a break be below that eight exponential moving average. All right, so we covered some metals. We covered some stock index uh, futures. Let's go ahead and take a really quick break. We'll get right back to it. So you want to be a trader. Well, you should know you're not alone. Over the past several years, record numbers of people have set up their very own online trading accounts. There's never been an easier time or more inexpensive way for do-it-yourselfers to get started trading the financial markets.
Better futures start now with the Ninja Trader mobile app. With the power to customize how you trade on the go, you can quickly and easily place trades with a single swipe and view index, financial, energy, metal, crypto, and more futures markets and access over 40 built-in indicators plus custom indicators all from your phone. Stay up to date at all times by enabling notifications. Get started today at ninjatrader.com. Thirty-year bond auction today, a little bit less than thrilling. Two point three seven bid to cover ratio, um, which means there were uh, basically uh, the ratio is two point three uh, tendered versus accepted. So uh, we'd like to see that number a little higher than two point three, but uh, the yield ended up average yield high yield was uh, four point six seven one. Um, this market did sell off. Um, it's still selling off. There's this, there's no double bottom in sight. We have a lower high swing high swing high. A, well, three swing high, a lower swing high B lower swing high C. Um, and that we don't see the same swing lows, but we do see a lower low. I mean, we're just breaking down here pretty good on the, on the 30 year long bond treasury bond, not the ultra bond, but the long bond. Uh, again, yesterday's candle was spectacular giant benchmark candle selling off here in bonds. Again, this is reflecting uh, the hawkishness that everyone's talking about uh, sentiment uh, from the marketplace. And um, I think the Fed funds tool is also following through on that idea as well. So again, not, uh, who this could go, sometimes this goes in threes, right? So well, here's, here's one, two, three was a little doji here. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five. So this does trend down for a while. This isn't like the uh, stock index futures that we see up one day, you know, and then we have a, um, a, a, a bullish engulfing and then we got a bear and then we got a bearish uh, equal and opposite, you know, that, that, that kind of behavior really you don't see in treasuries that much. Treasuries are steady, Freddy. They're a bigger marketplace and they're more of a institutional market. So you don't see that wishy washiness They make a decision and they go. And that's what we're seeing here. Remember the highs are way up here, 118, right? That's trading at a premium, but 118. Now we're down almost three whole points, which is a big deal, 115 uh, in 730 seconds. So looking pretty, looking pretty negative here as well. Let's take a look at crude oil. We had some crude oil data come out. Crude oil is still a trend channel. We're still in a trend channel. We're sideways in crude oil right here. Um, we're just... Walking along that eight exponential moving average, I, I just keep it there. I, you know, I, I put it there a long time ago because Bobby Iaccino suggested it and Mark, Mike Arnold suggested it. And so I left it there, right? And I changed the other two moving averages to simple moving averages, the 20, which is the green, and the 50, which is the blue. And those are more common to put on a daily or even a weekly chart. Um, numbers, right? Um, but I kept the eight because time and time again, we see it as a really important support or resistance level or a target. And right now it's acting like support. And you can see today's candle, um, we wick through it, but we didn't close below it. And we probably won't. That's another 25 cents on the downside. I don't think we're going to see that between now and the close, which is only in about 25 minutes. So that's just very crude sideways. You know, uh, I was talking to Mike Burke today at the midday wrap up when we were talking about this idea of um, balance between uh, possible escalation of conflict in the Middle East. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but that's a possibility versus this renewed worry about inflation and a little bit of a, a reduction in demand. So that's kind of the, the competing uh, forces, I think. And we're kind of sideways. This is, I mean, there's other forces, of course. There's a lot of other forces, of course. But those are the main two uh, out of, um, philosophical uh, debate touch points, if you will. In any event, um, sideways. We're sideways. We trended up sideways, just like we did before. We're sideways. Down. We trended up a little bit sideways. Paradigm shift up from the, uh, from the high 70s up to the low 80s, up to the, the mid 80s. Um, you know, will it continue? I don't know. Will we see $120 crude? I don't know. Hope not. Hope not. You know, Saudis don't want that. Nobody wants crude too expensive because they lose customers. So then you start electrifying even more stuff, which 
<laughs> we got a lot of electrification going on, by the way. Oh, boy. I appreciate you guys being here. BK, good to see you. Hitta, good to see you. Turtle, Anissa, uh, good to see you. Achardo, Chardo, thank you for being here. Appreciate you. A degenerate futz trader. I think that's short for degenerate futures trader. <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of that, of that handle, of that name, but thanks for being here with us uh, today. Greatly appreciate you uh, being here. Oh, boy. What a day. A lot of stuff uh, going on. Um, a lot of stuff going on uh, today, tomorrow, uh, next week uh, with the expanded shows. We thank you, everybody, for participating in those. Um, nine o'clock to 12 o'clock. Uh, we're all loving it. Um, and I appreciate everybody's participation uh, in those events for sure. So let's keep moving. Crude oil. Uh, let's go back to that intraday. Let's check out that intraday. I'm going to move that chart over to my other monitor. We're still kind of sideways here. We're still kind of sideways here. I know what you're thinking. At what time do you abandon this, this trade idea? Well, not yet, right? Well, we're pretty, it's pretty much unchanged. Remember, these are three micros on the e-mini S&P, we didn't get filled on the mini NASDAQ ones yet. And we might not because I was, I was hoping for higher highs in that chart. We haven't got those yet, but we are here right now and we're kind of consolidating. I mean, if you look at these last four candles, um, <clears throat> let me just draw a real quick uh, trend channel. Bear with me. Where is it at? Trend channel. Um, they kind of highlight highlight the obvious. I mean, these are the bodies of the candle. One, two, three, four, five, you know, almost an hour's worth of candles. Um, take six, 10 minute candles to make an hour. I got that math down, but we're not, quite, <laughs> we're not quite there yet. <laughs> anyway, so it's really sideways, really muted after a huge day, a huge, huge, huge rally day. And the only thing going through my mind right now is really Anthony Drager, right? From Edge saying, hey, there's a lot of folks long right now um, and if there's a lot of folks long right now, just based on all of these green candles, does that mean they become sellers? And they are. They have to get out, right? So they're going to they're going to sell, uh, which is, should put some downward pressure on this marketplace. I don't expect any news anymore today. I don't expect anything like that. And I think the CPI and the PPI has pretty much got digested. And when I say digested into the price. I mean, the initial reaction, the initial paradigm shift, we saw it twice, right? We saw it, we saw it the first time uh, with the CPI, with the big green candle, and then we saw it the second time with, uh, with the red candle, and then we saw it the second time with the PPI and the green candle. So this is, uh, this is skittish right now, but right now at the end of the day, everything's cool and fruity. We're just hanging out here as well. Anything could happen. I don't want to say it can't go any higher because it could go higher. It definitely could go higher, but I am testing out these ATM strategies. They're so good and they're so powerful. I can't, I can't tell you how, uh, how pleased I am with the way they work. And not only that, I mean, keep in mind, um, we're just touching the tip of the iceberg, right? So this is a multi-target trade, right? It's a bracket trade. It's not a simple bracket. A simple bracket would be a three and three or a two and two or a one and one at the same price. That's, that's, that's referred to as a simple bracket, right? Simple automated bracket, OCO. When you think of OCOs, order cancels other is the official old person definition. Um, order cancels order. This might be a different definition, but it's, but it's in the name. It's the same thing, right? If one order gets filled and something else gets canceled, something else happens. So, um, that's the nature of the way we have it automated. And I'm logged in right now. So the, the directions are still um, available. Like they will still work. You, do, you don't turn this off and go get some coffee. You want to be, uh, you can get some coffee, but leave, leave the platform running. Um, I don't know if you want to get coffee right now. It's getting close to a martini o'clock here on the island after the show. We're not quite there yet. We're getting close though. We're getting close. I have to walk the dog first, though. And that's a prerequisite. The dog is ready to, for a walk. And we got to do that first. Can't do that after a martini. Who knows what will happen? Um, but in any event, still no fill in the NASDAQ. I'm going to just pull over my, this is kind of my, um, you know, I have this handy. This is the control center. It's very important. It doesn't look like much, but it does a whole bunch of stuff. There's menus at the top. There's buttons on the bottom. Right. And I look at my positions. Okay. I know I didn't get filled on the NASDAQ trade yet. Other, Cause it would pop up here. 
I can see where my PL is right now. My uh, mark to market gr uh, gross PL, I think. I'm going to do the math in my head. Do I have the setup for commissions or not? Can't remember. But anyway, this is this is open, right? This is unrealized PL. It's not, it's not realized. Um, executions did a lot. We were busy today. We did some trades today. Oh, it is taking into account my commissions. There they are. There are my commissions. Re Real-time SIM account, but you could include commissions, which makes it a little more realistic. Okay. I just heard an order filled. And then you can see um, all of my activity here. Let's go see what order just got filled. All right. So we're in, we're in play with the NASDAQ also. Let's go check that. Let's check that guy out. Where is my NASDAQ dome at? Bear with me for, well, we'll just go to the NASDAQ chart, I think, and see where I put it. This is the ES. Is it behind here? No, it disappeared on me. This is the ES. Let's just shoot, let's just change it. We're going to change it to the MNQ. Easy peasy. Boom, hit the button. And then it shows my trades. Now, one of the things I want to do is I want to adjust a little bit here. So let's just open this up and really look at what's happening right here. It's really looking at what happened, right? We peaked, we made a new high, we wicked through, I got filled, and then these orders automatically were painted onto the screen. And I'm just gonna open it up a little bit more. We got my three lot stop up here. This was the hardest part of the trade because where do you put the stop when it's nothing but open sky? That's a little bit hard. There's no areas of interest really up, up here. There's some areas of interest further up, but I didn't want to be too further up, right? I wanted to be a little bit, you know, and I had to mind my risk, even though it's, it's a micro trade, you still should mind your risk. And so first target is here. Uh, first target is at uh, 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 502 half, second target, 496 uh, and a quarter. And then the third target is 18 uh, 490. Now I could move these around. I could move these around and um, my, my, uh, my, my OCO instructions will still be valid, right? It will still be valid. So as an example, if I just wanted to grab this limit order and move it up to let's say 05, I just, I click, I grab it with the left mouse. I bring it up. I click, it releases it and it just oop, cancel it. Now cancel. It just canceled and replaced. Now you saw my stop just jump, right? Because my trigger got hit for you know my profit trigger got hit so my stop jumped to break even plus a tick and you just saw it move down automatically now we're also approaching my first unit so the, no the next thing that should happen is if i get this first unit then this three lot stop should change to a two lot stop right i only did one jump i could have set it up so i could trail tick for tick all the way down if i wanted so i didn't do that i just did one one jump down I, at the end of the day, once we get stopped out or once we achieve our targets, I'll show you how I did it. But now, you know, I'm kind of happy, right? My stop just went to, um, you know, we made some progress on the trade. Uh, my, we got filled just like we were hoping we were going to get filled. And um, uh, my stop is break even plus one, right? I added a tick uh, better to my jump on my stop so that, you know, at least I could maybe recoup some of my transaction costs if, if in fact I get stopped out. And remember that stop is gonna act like a market order. So I probably should have done plus two, but I didn't. Um, so there it is. So that's so that's the retracement. It's not, it's not even a real retracement. I mean, it's, it's a baby retracement. We're not even, a, I'm not even trying to get to the 12.5%. I just want a little bit of meat, a little bit of meat. And you can see a three unit trade, you know, there's 37 bucks right there, right? By the time this whole trade, is fulfilled will be $170. I can't remember how I did the math, but it should be decent amount uh, of meat on the bone, even with the micro, we're 30% of the actual um, Anazi right now. But buyers aren't giving up. Buyers are not giving up. They know I'm short. They're messing with me. That's okay. I'm not stressed. I have zero stress because my stop is exactly where I want it to be. I didn't have to have any manual intervention. Oh boy, I just messed up all my windows, guys, looking for that chart. All right, stop filled. What happened? What happened? Stop was filled and my profit targets were automatically canceled, right? Now I don't have to worry about scrolling around, looking for uh, an order that I forgot about and get a double fill, a fill that I did not want to do. So let's go back and find this ladder. Let me see if I could find it. And let me just kind of recreate what I did. 
Bear with me, folks. Dun, 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 dun. All right, here's the ladder. Here's the MNQ. I have a two tabs at the bottom here. And custom, I'm going to edit this custom just to show you what my settings were. So my settings, three, uh, th three lot, one separated by one target each, right? Now you could do two and one if you didn't want to have a third target, but I did one, one, and one. And then we have a 50 stop loss, right? 50 tick stop loss, which I could adjust once it's placed. And sometimes with the micro NASDAQ, you might want to do that because it's kind of hard to, it moves around so much. You, it's kind of hard to nail exactly your areas of interest when you're setting it up. So it's okay to do that. Um, and then my profit targets were set at 50, 75, 100, right? For profit target one, profit target two, profit target three. Now my custom, my custom stop strategy for each target, you can custom make make them different for each target if you really want to. Don't get too crazy. Uh, let's see what that was though. Um, so what I said was, um, you know, once we get halfway to my first target, right? Remember my first target was 50. Once we get halfway, once we get to 25, then my profit trigger is going to move my stop to auto break even plus one tick, plus one tick, right? This will step it. And then we could also do a trail. We're not ready for that yet. We'll do that. We'll do that in the upcoming event. But right now, just an auto break even jump on the stop. That's all I did. And then um, I hit okay. And I did the same one for all three. You got to do the same one for all three. You can't just do one of them because then this would say none and there would be no stop strategy associated with the second unit that it would still be going if you got the first unit. Make sense? Anyway, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. All right, let's go back to the MES and see what's going on. Now, where's our stop here, right? We're getting to our stop here in the MES. MES is following suit. This is systematic, folks. These are just buyers, buyers, buyers. This counter trend trade failed, right? Now, luckily for me, I was a little bit, I exercised a little bit more patience on the micro NASDAQ by waiting for us to make new highs. I didn't do that for the E-mini S&P. And as a result, where's my E-mini S&P? Micro E-mini S&P. As a result, I didn't get as fit, a good a fill as I could have hoped for, right? I could have got a much better fill. So from a lessons learned point of view, this wasn't the greatest fill of all time, um, but I did it early. I can't remember exactly which bar I did it in. I think this bar right here, three to 310. So that's a lesson learned. Be a little bit more patient. Wait through a wick through to the top. Didn't do it. Still in the game, but still, it's not looking good, right? It's not looking good. At a certain point in time, I'm going to tighten up the stop. Right now we have, we're not to that last 10 minute candle yet. We got a few minutes left. We got two minutes in one second. Um, so that, at that point, we'll kind of reevaluate what to do with that particular, particular uh, market uh, stop loss that I have set. So what else do we got cooking here? Let me see. Bear with me here while I pull up my uh, cheat sheet. Maybe at this, let's talk about what brings tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday, usually a slower economic news day, but let's talk about the economic releases up to tomorrow. Um, we have, again, the Bureau of Labor Statistics strikes again. First thing, 8.30 East Coast time, 7.30 Central time, import export prices. That's coming at us by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That could be meaningful, although maybe not as meaningful as today's events and yesterday's events. Um, consumer sentiment, 10 o'clock, University of Michigan. And that actually has a lot of different data that comes out of that report um, at 10 o'clock. And it's, it's, worth, it's worth looking at because sentiment is what this is about. You know, trader sentiment is what this is about. So that's a big, important one. It's on a Friday. They always have it on a Friday. I don't know why you'd think, you know, University of Michigan, you associate University of Michigan with college kids and, you know, none of them take classes on Friday. You know, my, kid, my, my kids are like, why would I take a class on Friday, dad? Thursday night is the night to go out. And then I sleep all day Friday. And I was like, oh boy, there's my tuition money. My tuition money, Friday's off. And then after you're a freshman, you're a sophomore, then it's like, all right, we're only taking classes in the afternoon, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, next up, Baker Hughes, one o'clock, Baker Hughes rig count. You know, Bobby Aicino talked about how important this rig count is and how long it takes to build up to it, you know, get a new rig going. 
right? It's not, you don't just turn on a light switch, you know, it's, you just, you just don't turn alarm off. You got, you got, it takes, it takes months and months and months. There we go. We finally get a little bit of sell off on that 10 minute mark. Uh, we'll see if it keeps going. Uh, Atlanta fed, uh, Raphael Bostic is speaking at two 30, probably some other fed folks are going to pop it, crawl out of the woodwork and talk. Also looks like the sun's coming out here on the Island. Um, and then Mary Daly, 3.30, 3.30, you can see the light shining behind me. Mary Daly, 3.30, the uh, St. Louis Fed president is going to speak as well. She's East Coast time, so I'll give her a break for going 3.30, right? She uh, West Coast time. So San Francisco is, what, three hours back? I know that's where uh, our main man, Jason, is located. So that puts it at 12.30. Could be a lunchtime gig for her. I don't know. Anyway, that's it. That's all we're up against tomorrow, but still enough to keep busy. All right, we're breaking through that trend channel right now. And my first target is getting close. My first target is in play right here. Let's see if this behaves the way it's supposed to behave. And we'll kind of hang tight. I'm not going to change a thing. I'm going to, I'm full, my hands are folded across my, uh, across my body here. Remember, this is an OCO trade again, multi-target. Now I'm looking at the dis, the time left on the clock, eight minutes and 47 seconds. I do want to get out of this trade uh, on re during regular trading hours, right? What we call regular trading hours. And um, so, which means I would probably tighten things up. If we get any success whatsoever, I still want my stop to jump. I think I said this one to jump also um, at the halfway point. So we're not quite there yet. We might've missed it by a tick or so. Anyway, we'll stay tuned. We'll stay tuned here, right here, right now. The 10-year micro yield is tracking 4.6 4.563 the two-year yield is 4.892 so that's about uh 19 plus 4 24 basis point separation rounding which is less than 30 so that maybe that separation is coming down a little bit. I don't know. It's too early to tell. Yields are still pretty high, though. Bonds and notes are still pretty, pretty depressed. I would say they're a little bit, a little bit down on the bluesy side. I added a column in my market analyzer. I wonder if anyone noticed it. No one probably noticed it. I'm so sad. Uh, order flow VWAP, purple, right? So what I did was I said, hey, I want to add an indicator to my market analyzer. And I want the indicator to populate all the way down on every single instrument. We're going to, we're going to do an interest trader platform unleashed on this. I think not this next Friday, but the Friday after. So I'm going to spend time and show you how to do this. I'm just tracking the VWAP. I made it purple because my VWAP is purple here as well. And you can see it down here where my crosshairs is um, on the, on the chart. And you know, it's, it's 52, four, 14 and a half about, and check it out, 52, 14 and a half on the market analyzer. So it gives me another touch point. You could do this with moving averages. You could do this with all sorts of technical analysis types of data. I just happen to do it with uh, volume weighted average price and um, color coded it a little bit. And there you have it. So the market analyzer is pretty powerful. A lot of stuff you could do here with it. So um, I wanted to show that, which we did. All right. Let's see if we have six minutes, 19 seconds left for this market to cooperate. The sun is shining strong here on the island. It just came out. It was raining like crazy. Polly, did you get all the rain I got? I mean, it was, I want to say, close to three inches here on John's Island. I mean, it was just, I woke up and, the you know, there was, the buckets were filled with water. It was, uh, it was quite a, quite a rain. Finally, this it was cloudy all afternoon, windy all afternoon. Finally, it's a little bit sunny here. Um, but uh, I don't know if you had the same thing in Somerville, Polly. Somerville's about what 10, 15 miles maybe north uh, west of me as the crow flies. I'm estimating, maybe a little further. But you should get similar weather. But we got we had a flood advisory. We're talking, you know, my phone was going rant, rant, rant. The TV was doing it. Uh, you know, it was, you could hear it from the neighbor's house. It was quite, it was quite spectacular. Anyway, you get used to it. You, this is our, this, this is our natural disaster is, is water. Uh, they call this the low country for a reason. 
Um, I think I'm in the high part of the island. I think I'm 26 feet above sea level. And obviously, if you're at the beach, you're zero feet above, you know, one foot above <laughs> sea level. Um, so I, I'm luck luckily I'm at the top, but still, you can't cross bridges, you can't go to a grocery store, you can't do anything. Man, we're really having a hard time battling through this uh, this area. We got four minutes left. We got we're having a hard time battling through this area support, which is right here at 48 half. It doesn't want to go. It doesn't want to go. We're going to hang tight. We're not going to change anything for the next four minutes and 30 seconds. I've got my Ninja Trader Yeti Tumblr handy here. Um, I know we had some swag that was sent out. I think it was sent out already um, to our first contest winner. We're going to have uh, more and more contests. I was talking to Mike Burke earlier today, and he's got, he's, he's got something up his sleeve. Which we're gonna, which we're gonna announce soon. Uh, it's gonna be fun. So hopefully you guys could participate and have fun with it, just like we do. Um, doesn't look like we're gonna get that retracement. Buyers are too strong here, folks. Um, MACD is hovering around zero. It's not doing anything spectacular. Yeah, the MACD crossed under the signal line, but barely. Just kind of touching it right now as we speak. Um, let's look at the volume profile here for the last couple of minutes. because it's not going to be a normal distribution. It's very not normal, right? So we had, we have a competing point of control up where we're trading at right now at 52.51. That's uh, from the afternoon point of view, that's where the most volume is. We had the main point of control. The official one is still the official one, which is pretty close to yesterday's uh, at 52.06. And then these, these clusters, these volume clusters all over the place. This is not a really good volume profile. Uh, just so you know, you could actually make a, make a tighter one. You don't have to anchor it to the open. Uh, you could anchor it to whatever you want. Again, you just right click and you look for drawing tools on the menu that pops up and you go to order flow volume profile. And then you could kind of define whatever area you want. If you wanted to define the area between uh, at the start of the opening range as an example, uh, all the way to till now, you'd get a different profile. Doesn't look any better than the first one, to be honest with you. But you could do those kind of things with the NinjaTrader software. It's really powerful. You could do the analysis that you want to do. Very happy. Very happy with it. All right. Two minutes and 25 seconds left. So what do we do? What's the best thing? Now, there's a couple of options here. There's a couple of options that we could employ. I'm going to this is the micro e mini S and P. There's our price. We're short at fifty two fifty. Here's where the market is. So we could manually trail the stop if we want. Um, we could just hit the close all button and call it a day, right? And that would that would liquidate our position at market. Oop. Now we just hit our our auto jump, so I don't have to move my stop to break even. It just auto jumped as this market continues to go down, um, or I can hit the close button and it'll, that's like the panic button. It's like, all right, forget it. Cancel all the orders, make me flat and I'll live the fight another day. Right. Um, or we could say, you know what? We have a whole nother hour advantage goes to futures trading. We're going to trade after hours here, uh, for another hour before CME Globex closes down for an hour. So you do have that luxury also. Again, advantage goes to futures here. Um, me personally, what I would do, with a minute left, I'd start trailing this. I would start trailing the stop a little bit. I know it's an OCO, but you could still do it, right? You could still do it. I just start trailing and trailing and trailing. Um, and you know, maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll get a runner on the downside here in the last minute. I don't know. But by doing this, by trailing it, at least I'm adding a little bit more meat on the boat. One, two, three, four, five ticks times three contracts, right? That's five times three. That's 15 ticks, right, of positive PL. So we're happy with that. We'll go down a little bit more. We'll keep trailing a little bit. Um, sellers aren't really really piling in here just yet. Let's see what the last 41 seconds brings us and let's see if we get one of the targets and see that stop change to a two lot. See if we get lucky. We're uh, Mission control, hang tight. We're going to see if we get luckier. <clears throat> All right. We got one. The stop changed to two. Exactly what we wanted it to do. So again, OCOs are awesome. I'm just going to keep trailing down. We'll keep, we're just going to play this out to, to the bitter end. We're going to play this out to the bitter end. We're just going to keep, you know, manually moving our, you know, moving our uh, stop down, 
as again, I think there's people liquidating positions right now. That's how I would, that's what I think is happening here right now. Um, how far it's going to go down, nobody knows. Um, but there's, look at the activity. Look at the volume coming in. Look at the activity. Overall, uh, 1.6 million traded in the E-mini S&P Classic. That's a big day. That's not a small day. That's a big, big, big day uh, for volume. So there was institutional participation for sure. And there's probably some more speculative participation as well when you get these big trends and these big equal and opposites like we just had. Um, what are we doing here? Let's see, go all the way down the board here. Okay, dollars weaker versus most of the pairs, except the yen, of course. Um, Brazilian real, unched. Euro FX made a, had a big uh, comeback here, almost unched on the Euro FX today as well. So now we're into that extra hour, right? So this is when I'm really going to get kind of aggressive with my trail. Again, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I, I expect this to be sloppy. This extra hour sometimes is sloppy, but we have a trade. It's going the right way. So um, it's okay to be patient too, right? It's okay to be patient. The dog could wait. The dog could wait for her walk. That's, I'm sorry. She's, she's old. She's cranky. She's an old German wire hair pointer. She's 13. Um, and she's set in her ways, kind of like I am, but, um, <laughs> we'll be patient. No, keep, keep trailing. Just click and click. That's all you have to do. You see the red bar going all the way across. And that reminds you it's an OCO, by the way, if this were just a regular, uh, if this was just a regular a stop buy stop, you would only see it partially covering the trading ladder, but because it's OCO, you know, and you can see at the bottom here, I got the lightning bolt going under the ATM strategy. That also reminds you as well. Let's keep going. Let's see if we can get the second target. Let's see if we can get it. I don't know. Otherwise, we'll get stopped out and you'll see. Boom, stopped out. Other targets are, are automatically canceled and all is well in the world. The last thing I'm going to do here before I shut down the platform, I'm going to check out my positions. I don't have any. I'm going to check out my orders. There's nothing here to cancel. Oopsie, wait a second. Let's make sure that's true. Yeah, there's nothing here to cancel. So it means I don't have any orders dangling. And I'm good to uh, close down my platform for, for at least for now. Tonight, we'll probably open it up again a little bit later uh, after we walk the dog. But that's another thing. In any event, appreciate everybody being here today. Sorry, we went a little bit extra overtime today. But um, I think uh, hopefully we learned a little bit and we had a lot of fun. Again, appreciate everybody being here with us. Um, and remember, most important message of the day, be safe out there. Be good to each other. See you soon. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You you can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website.